Today we're looking at a game developed by Iron Ward and published by 505 Games in June of 2021, Red Souls 2 Survivors. This is Chris at Talon Gaming, let's dig in. 117 years after the destruction of Earth in the first game in this series, you play as an executor tasked with leading the secret task force encountering the Stroll mutant invasion on Mars. Your goal, simply put, humanity's survival. There is currently a myriad of available DLC ranging from soundtracks and digital artwork to skins and more impressively corporations which bring along new campaigns, missions, maps and advanced unit classes. System requirements are light. Most any quad-core CPU with 6 gigs of RAM and a discrete video card are required. Any gaming PC built in the last 10 years won't have any trouble with this one. The included single-player campaign consists of 15 main missions and over 20 side missions where mission success helps to lower infection rates, gather resources and find supplies. And in order to complete the campaign you'll need to recruit and train troops, specialists, research tech, weapons and alien origins very similar to the XCOM franchise. You'll also need to build and develop facilities and your landship HQ as well as explore the world and establish a communication network between facilities. There are several mission types including stealth, exploration and survival. Each mission deployed costs several deployment points earned on the geoscape at each resupply. Each mission has a primary objective but is also highly customizable allowing you to spend additional deployment points and resources. You can for example increase available secondary missions, request air support and even artillery and logistics. You'll also be able to adjust mission difficulty and multiplayer accessibility. Each mission has a primary objective that must be completed for the mission to be considered a success. Secondary missions are optional, but are very beneficial to the advancement of both your characters and the defense of humanity. As you play, horde swarms consisting of a large variety of enemy units will come in in progressively more difficult waves during the deployment and will continue to attack until extraction. During the mission you'll need to ensure that you keep your ammunition and supplies stocked up, so scavenging from lockers and boxes is essential for success. You'll also enter buildings, kick down and blow up doors, enable power relays, artillery, automated defenses, missile systems, and even nuclear weaponry. From the Geoscape, you'll see your area of influence or regions that you made contact with, along with their intel and infection statistics. You can scan for intel, view available missions, see the global straw infestation, see research, building, and supply timers, as well as access the armory, loadout screens, facilities, and more. As you've seen from the mission screens, customization is a big part of the Red Solstice 2 experience. Character looks are also highly customizable from insignias, colors, and patterns. There's also a variable smorgasbord of unlockable items, bonuses, and equipment available to spend your points earned as you level up. Your loadout is also completely customizable, allowing you to choose from more than six classes, a large assortment of primary and secondary weapons, offensive, defensive, and support skills, both active and passive, as well as bonuses and so much more. Many of these customization items also affect how your character looks. A pretty nice touch. Graphics are a high point of Red Solstice 2 with crisp and pretty textures, smooth realistic animations and greatly detailed maps to explore. For this genre, the combat is truly worth checking out, but the variety of maps and terrains is a little low. Cutscenes on the other hand are pretty limited to non-existent. The interfaces are well laid out and everything is functional and easy to access. The Geoscape also looks good, but not as nice as combat. Sound effects are plentiful, detailed, and feels like a great match for the game. Music is okay, but mostly atmospheric. Voice acting, it's okay at best. Your leadership qualities are slipping, old man. Nothing great to be found, but I have heard worse. It's obviously not the cornerstone of the game, but I feel like it never really had a chance given the mediocre scripts. The call-outs from the executor on the other hand were well performed. Reloading. The story and the concept is very interesting, but seemed a little on the thin side and I didn't find progression particularly well defined. The introduction video only provides hints as to the backstory and you pick up bits and pieces throughout the game both during missions and from the periodic chatter on the Geoscape. Controls come in two distinct varieties, both WSAD and a point-and-click real-time strategy style. Either one takes a little getting used to before becoming proficient. I found that I liked the point-and-click scheme a little bit better as I could focus more on the surroundings and better using skills and abilities. The game also allows you to use Overwatch, which fires for you or allows full manual control if you choose. 
The learning curve isn't too steep, but I would recommend completing the tutorials and perusing the key bindings before jumping into the campaign. The combat is quite fun with a bit of a real-time strategy feel, but honestly feels like a strategic action RPG for the most part. I really have no complaints about the combat outside of the repetitive nature of the missions. Personally, I like a little more variety. For campaign play, the game could be a little clear on what your current objectives are. I found it a little lacking in direction, not knowing what I really should be doing next. Expect the campaign to take at least 20 hours to complete, more so if you're having trouble figuring out what to do, like I did. Despite the rather bland campaign, the game does offer a lot of replay value. Between hosting others or joining in the campaigns of others, and the skirmish maps, there's quite a bit to see and do. There's also a substantial amount of unlockable gear, upgrades, and abilities to strive for, as well as a handful of DLC packages available to expand game time even further. If you enjoy a good top-down shooter and enjoy sharing it with friends, then this might be what you're looking for. As a solo gamer, you might want to consider looking elsewhere if you're looking for a great story and engaging campaign. That being said, if you grab it on sale, it's still worth the price of admission.